and as you can see a cool little uh, songer fly that, that really really is is alive in the water I, I really love the the way a uh, rabbit uh, songer strips works in the water and combined with the, the head of uh, of deer hair you really really have a good combination a small small efficient fly for uh, for the for the for the dusk fishing for for sea trout or, or trout of any any sorts um, a nice moving nice moving fly uh, with a nice profile as well uh, with the head and, and stuff like that well um, enjoy the the tying video evening everyone and today I'm gonna tie a small uh, small sunger fly something uh, like this it's gonna be small yellow and uh, <laughs> yellow small purple and uh, and a black sunker for uh, for sea trout um, first of all I'm gonna talk a little about these uh, sunger strips and how to prepare them correctly and um, when you buy a package of this uh, this pre-cut sunger strip often you see that the quality of the fur uh, leaves <laughs> much to wish for so I'm gonna tell you a little about how to how to do that uh, in order to make this fly swim as as good as possible what you want to do is you want to cut the part of uh, the part of the the wing here that is gonna be uh, uh, kind of like the tail of the fly, you want to cut that into um, into a tapered tapered shape, as you can see I'm doing here, uh, because that will make the the wing here more uh, more alive and uh, and move move way way better in the water. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm close, carefully uh, uh, cutting uh, cutting this. Uh, along with the the hairs so I get this as you can see it, it tapers down into a point and uh, that's not enough um, as you can see here there's kind of on the fur here there are two different colors one is, uh, is dark and one other is light and all the dark is surplus that's stuff you don't need that will only fill up your your hook uh, and uh, and uh, make your wing uh, stiff and your fly swim swim uh, more poorly so Try to cut all of that off by turning the, the the piece of fur here in your hands, holding it like this, so it bulges up, and then cut into it. Cut as much of that dark stuff away as you can, because it will make your fly swim a lot, a lot better. And as you can see, I've done that. Uh, with quite a lot of success here, making my uh, my my sunker strip way way more uh, more more movable. Also, what you want to do is you want to stretch uh, the skin here to make it even more flexible, like so. And uh, because I'm gonna do this is gonna be a fairly fast fly. I'm not gonna use a million <laughs> million hours on making uh, very precise and and uh, completely identical turns of ribbing and stuff like that in on this wing I'm just gonna just gonna cut this off and I'm gonna tie it down in the hook pin and then up towards the end of the fly in where the uh, where the, uh, the muddler head is gonna be so I'm just gonna take well, that's a bit too much I'm just gonna divide the wing here about so And that's where I want to tie it down. Uh, flying a few turns of tying thread. And uh, when the fly is done, I'm going to give this uh, section on the underside a bit of varnish to ensure it's going to stay in place. Like so, I'm using a, a 0.8 thread here to, uh, to actually make sure. As you can see, I get a bit of a gap, not a big one, but a, s a small gap there. That's something that's pretty hard to <laughs> to avoid. Uh, okay, holding everything back here, making my thread up in front of that. And then I'm going to use some black dubbing. It's a fairly simple fly, this one. And we're not going to use uh, many materials. It's a cool, cool fly. Um, and I've had some very, very good experience with this uh, over the years for, for both sea trout and brown trout in streams. Actually, uh, the first times I used this fly was when I was in 10th grade. I went to this, not boarding school, but it's a school where you live at the school. And, uh, and this school here had a, 
had a, a kind of like a, a fishing, a fishing, uh, fishing classes. So that's why I chose this school. But what they didn't know was they were well, we're in Denmark, so everyone is pretty free, and uh, <laughs> and the school's budget at some point ran out for uh, for having teachers check on us uh, during night time. So uh, me and uh, me and a very good friend of mine, uh, a few nights we did uh, we did just we just left our dorms at around uh, midnight and just went fishing because there was a very good uh, very nice stream uh, very close to the school so we just uh, we just packed our gear and uh, and went fishing <laughs> in the middle of the night uh, and then uh, in the small town when the bakers opened they opened uh, around around 5 something like that then we picked up uh, some uh, some some morning bread and brought that uh, brought that to uh, to the other two roomies in our bunk and uh, and when you have been fishing all night it's pretty pretty easy to convince uh, a, a dorm teacher that uh, you're actually sick so we uh, we just uh, we just checked in sick and uh, and slept for most of the uh, most of the, yeah, until until midday something like that, and then because when you you've, you've you've turned in sick, you cannot um, you cannot uh, you could not uh, enter the the activities with the other kids until five or six o'clock something like that because otherwise they just say you're skipping school. So what else was there to do but to sit and wait? Uh, and while we waited, we of course tied a little flies, and this fly was one of the the patterns we used uh, during this night fishing. Never caught a big sea trout on it, but uh, but caught a lot, a lot of, uh, of nice, nice brown trouts and uh, and uh, some uh, some smaller sea trouts as well. It's a nice fly, especially for smaller streams. Well, that was a, a story from uh, from way back. Uh, and uh, if you see this, Jacob, then. Uh, <laughs> And this one goes out to you. It was some um, pretty pretty cool days fishing like madmen. Of course, some evenings we did not uh, we did not venture to the stream because um, on a school like this there was of course also girls. But that's a completely different story. <laughs> Maybe for another for for another time. I'm just gonna use a bit of saliva here to to keep everything in check. It's easier to. To get around, make sure everything is, is nice and tight, like so. But it was oh, it was good times. That school was just amazing. Uh, I basically learned more about fly tying in that year than I had the, uh, all the years up to that because we were basically tying flies. I don't know, an hour or two a day, something like that. And uh, it was very cool because all the other guys there. At least loads of them were as crazy uh, f about fly fishing as as uh, as I was, so that was uh, that was a relief. It was actually okay to just well sit around talking about fly fishing for you know <laughs> days on end. Uh, it was it was really really good times. I met a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of true friends uh, there, friends that uh, is is still still uh, my best friends. Um, like so, I just have to turn this a bit because now I'm gonna attach a small piece of port or artificial jungle duck. It's gonna look very good on this fly. Like so. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. These uh, port uh, artificial jungle cocks are the best, uh, the best artificial jungle cocks there is on the market. It's made of something that is close to paper without being paper. So they're, uh, they're. Uh, almost, well, they're durable as hell. I've never seen one of these actually break, um, and uh, and uh, they of course can, they're of course water resistant, um, and they're also pretty flexible. So uh, so you won't get this uh, plastic feeling from them as you get with many of the other artificial uh, jungle cocks, which which I think can probably. Uh, uh, can probably have an effect on how your fly moves in the water if it goes to one side or the other, something like that. It moves, uh, moves uh, falsely in the water or tilts or something like that. I'm gonna take four strands of. It does not have to be exactly four strands, but well, four strands is just easy. It's just to take two big strands off and then tie them down here. Oops. Like so. 
draw them out so they're going to be on the shoulders of the fly, like that. It doesn't matter if they stick a bit out. Uh, the water, the current will, will keep them in check anyway. Like that. Then uh, it's time to get your future fly. Uh, uh, deer hair, of course, it does not have to be future fly per se. <laughs> it's just, well, future fly is the stuff I have, so yeah, it has to be future fly. Taking uh, a big bundle, I don't want to miss too much with this, and and I don't need this to be in uh, to be in a um, in a hair stacker or stuff like that. I'm just gonna put this on there, and I'm gonna use this as hackles as well. I'm just gonna try to distribute it all the way around the hook here, and then make a few turns with the thread here before I tighten this down, and then make these kind of as you can see I move the thread in between the hairs here so I don't catch hairs but but I make sure that they are uh, they are on there like so let's take all these hairs here force them a bit back if possible it was possible in this case the double hook here is, is very good for a sea trout of course, if you're fishing in rivers where there is a lot of smaller brown trouts and stuff like that, I do not recommend you fish with the with the, with a double hook like I'm using here because uh, it, it can it can do quite a lot of damage to a to a small trout's mouth. So if you if you get small trout on this, uh, you fish waters with a lot of small trout. Of course, use a use a single hook, uh, preferably without a bard, to uh, to save save all the smaller fish like so take that off and then cut into these uh, these hairs here make sure not to cut too much off at first and make sure only to cut uh, the uh, the stumps off do not cut the uh, the actually uh, tips of uh, of the hairs off because uh, you would want those as uh, kind of like a hackle if you want another uh, more than just uh, what the 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 deer hair here um Provide you with. Uh, you can of course uh, apply a hackle just before uh, just before applying the, the the deer hair. I tend to think this is this is enough. I need to turn the fly to see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna cut off most of it on the other side uh, to make sure that uh, that the hooks are are free. It's delicate work this with the with your scissors and uh, and the deer hair. The, the reason why the deer head and the muddler head is, is so good is it gives a lot of profile, it gives a lot of bulk and it moves a lot of water. Uh, all things that you, you really like in a, in a, in a night fly or, or a dusk fly. So, um, something like that. Can I maybe give this a bit more so you can actually see it better? It's going to be difficult. This is going to be easier to see how it looks when it's done uh, on the on the photograph I'm going to do because I'm going to do that on a white background. But oh, uh, there it is, a small, uh, a small double hook, and uh, and I gotta say, if you haven't used this so far, then this uh, Kamasane and B uh, two two hundred and seventy is uh, is a very 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 cool hook for uh, for for uh, sea trout flies. Well. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. A n nice little easy, uh, inexpensive, uh, good looking uh, workhorse. Uh, nice addition to any fly box. Thank you for tuning in.